Good evening everyone, time for another member update. We're going to start out with the Bitcoin chart. We're mainly going to be talking about when to buy, but uh, with what's going on in silver we want to talk about when to stack silver and some of the members are talking about that. So I really wanted to address that. But let's start out with Bitcoin. If you remember we had the Bitfinex hack and it's still up in the air. You can see the Bitfinex price is frozen at 604 right when the hack occurred. But if we bounce back to the Bitstamp price, you can see that the Bitstamp price is almost back up to where the Bitfinex price is frozen at 604. Will will it be loosened up? I don't know. They've recently talked about how they're going to try to share the losses amongst all the holders and try to reopen. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, they're going to have to come up with some really good explanations. And this was a very regulated exchange. In fact, this was an exchange that I was not comfortable with. I've, I've covered the reasons in the past, but also because they were so quick to come online and, and so quick to jump through all the regulatory hoops, it kind of gave me pause. But back to the main issue, which is the price action. And this is just as applicable for Bitcoin as it is for silver, because when you have an asset that the powers that be are trying to suppress the price of, they love to use shock and awe. And, and the best shock and awe available you can ever have is the price action. And you can see the dramatic price action here. The Bitcoin was fairly steady for a good period of time there at 660 roughly. And the drop went all the way down to 465. Uh, if you would have picked it up when I did that video, you'd be up $100 already. And, you know, long term, it's starting to near the downtrend. It may round off, but it may rally. We'll just have to wait and see. But the main point I'm going to point out here is that if you're, there's, there's two methods of investing in these sorts of things. Now, obviously, we're talking about an asset that you are convinced is undervalued. In other words, it has value. You don't want to overpay for it. You would like to pay as little as possible, but then again, you want to have as much of it as possible. That's because you believe in it. If you believe in something, then you want to stack as much as as much of it as you possibly can before whatever the inevitable situation you're expecting occurs. So I uh, I feel that way about both Bitcoin and silver. Now I didn't actually buy any Bitcoin on this SmackDown. One of the reasons why is because my Coinbase account has gone through some really strange. Uh, verification rules and they've disqualified it and it's a long process to get it requalified. I already have a lot of cryptocurrency and uh, but this would have been a very good time to buy as you can see from the chart and I wanted to introduce this concept with Bitcoin and then continue with silver. With When you have a, a investment that you believe in there's pretty much two ways you can approach it. If you believe it's going to be a long-term bull market and that it's going to ultimately be a winner, then you can either just steadily invest in it as it rises or sort of a dollar cost average thing where I'm sure all of you are familiar with dollar cost averaging. That's when you buy a set dollar amount of a particular investment on a regular basis regardless of price. And the benefit, that's something that Wall Street loves to talk about. There is a benefit there and the benefit is that when you do that, if you're buying on a high price spike or on a very sharp rise, then you don't get as much of it. But if you happen to be buying on a dip, then you get more of it. So over the long term, th that's what I would considered to be a stacker. So that's a term that's used very often in the precious metals community. It's sometimes used in the cryptocurrency community. But basically, a stacker is somebody who's in it for the long term. They're adding incrementally to their stack, and they just continue to add. And that's sort of a dollar cost averaging strategy. 
Now, I did that for the longest time, but then I also decided that I wanted to play price action. And one of the reasons that I did that was because I saw how manipulated silver was. So, in regards to silver, we're going to talk about that, but I, I first want to talk about the chart action that we have here and whether or not this is going to be a serious smackdown. Now, if you're a dollar cost averaging type and you're just investing on a regular basis, then this could be a good buy for you. But then again, you're probably not looking for good buys. You're just buying when you have the money available and whatever the price is, you add to that. Now, as I said, I transitioned out of that model and went into more of a smackdown model. In other words, a back up the truck model. And the reason that I did that is because I noticed a pattern in the price of silver that there were these violent shock and awe shakeouts that occurred in the price. And I decided after seeing a number of those, and especially in some situations where I bought before those, I realized how much more I could have gotten if I would have waited for that violent smackdown. Now, one of the big questions is, how do you know if that's occurring? Well, one of the ways you're going to know that that's occurring is that the price action is going to be absolutely unbelievable. Uh, it will be something like what I've shown here with these blue arrows. So a, a real smackdown that rivals the type of smackdowns that silver has had in the past would be something like this drop here. Uh, say Sunday night when it opens we gap down to below 19 and then the price would fall all the way through this rising line and down to about 1550. The other thing that you see and you saw it on the Bitcoin chart is that it's met with enormous amount of volume. The higher the volume the better because the more volume that you see on a smackdown the more likely that's the end of the smackdown because you're seeing massive sellers and massive buyers coming in. So let's go to the daily chart. Actually, let's go to the weekly chart and try to look at some of these. I'm going to wipe out the indicators here and we'll take a look at a few of these. So I have actually done stacking on SmackDowns, uh, quite a bit of it. I stacked here. Uh, that wasn't a massive smackdown. That was actually a financial panic during the fall of 2008. And we had silver falling dramatically without gold. And gold had already turned around. And I had to pull the trigger when I saw silver in the $8 price range. So that was kind of a fundamental buy. But these smackdowns I did stack. These $26 ones here. Uh, I believe I stacked here. I know I stacked there. And then I did sort of a slow incremental buy during this long time period here and uh, just kind of was picking and choosing amongst some of the coins that I liked. Now, what we have right now is what I can only term a pullback in a rising bull market. This is definitely, definitely not a type of price drop that causes me to uh, stay have to pull the trigger or back up the truck. And I, I want to say I've said before in other videos about how I make the determination of whether I'm going to back up the truck. Now I have not always been right. And of course if you look at it long term you'd have to look at these stacking opportunities here where I stacked at 26 on those drop downs. Yes it went all the way back up to 36 twice. Uh, actually thrice but then again, it ultimately fell below that. Nevertheless, I did stack, and I was stacking Perth Lunar at the time. I did stack during those smackdowns. Now, you could say ultimately I was proven wrong, and uh, based on the price of the Lunars, I don't think so. I'm really not showing a loss. I don't believe on anything that I've stacked. And so that's, that's going to be one of the major reasons that you want to do that. Now, I want to cover the second and probably the most important reason that you want to stack on major price I'm sorry not you stack back up the truck on major price moves down 
And the best explanation I can show you of why you want to do that is this price rise right here. Now, for virtually all of this price rise, the only time I bought silver was right there. And I bought, I think I bought some elephants at that point. But for the rest of this entire move, for the rest of, from this period of late, uh, summer of 2010 through really through 2012 I didn't add any silver and the reason why I didn't add any silver is because the price drop was not drastic enough now I, I may be wrong here I may have added some coins right there but I I think it was just a small amount pretty much I missed buying during this entire rise and that's really important because uh, at, by the time this rise had started, I was no longer in, incrementally buying or stacking silver. I was actually uh, waiting for massive price drops to come in and stack. And so I missed getting caught at a lot of these prices. Anywhere from 32 all the way to 48, I really didn't buy anything at those prices and it and there was a period of time when a lot of people were very angry at me because I was doing silver updates at the time I did not have a member site at the time so I wasn't releasing my personal picks or the things I was interested in I was just doing general silver fundamentals and that caused me to come under fire from a lot of people who were saying you're wrong you're wrong and uh, you made a lot of people lose money and that's just the way the game is played, and I accept responsibility for that. But nevertheless, just telling you about what I did personally, I pretty much did not stack anything of significance during that time period. Now, this time period, starting about here from this smackdown all the way down to about here, I did a significant amount of uh, stacking, we'll say, because there was just an overall low price all the way through, and it was just easy to find what you liked and the price was low and pick it up. Uh, there were a couple of times when the price went down below 16 and 15 on a fairly drastic move that I went and pulled the trigger on things. But for the most part, I just kind of bought what I wanted when I wanted. So those are the strategies. And that's why I have come to the conclusion that I, I don't like to follow the stacking strategy, the uh, dollar cost average strategy, but I would rather play the strategy of backing up the truck because I've recognized in the time I've watched this chart that the powers that be like to use shock and awe to drive people out of the market. And that's the best time, absolutely the best time to come into the market. Now, the, coin, the coins that I'm watching or a coin that I'm watching is the half ounce monkey and we have the I believe the roosters coming online in September uh, there's not a lot of these available this is the one that I'm watching and I'm watching Atmex Gainesville doesn't have anything I'm watching Provident as well uh, this is the one on JM Bullion you can see a hundred plus of these is uh, 1417 if you pay with wire check or Bitcoin so 1417 for me for the longest time an average normal price that I've paid for half ounce lunars is around 12 bucks a good deal the best deal phenomenal deal that I've gotten is 10 or below and then a spendy deal has been maybe 12 to 13 that's roughly what I've paid for these half ounce coins over the course of the time that I've been buying them which has been roughly since the 2012 Dragon. I've pretty much been stacking the half ounce Lunars, uh, especially on drastic drops, uh, back up the truck scenarios. Although, again, when we were below 15 or around 15, I was just kind of stacking them uh, just whenever I felt like it. So, looking at this coin, looking at the prices, the one thing you have to watch, and it's good that we have this documented in this video, is are they arbitraged? Are they moving the price of these coins based on the movement in the silver price? 
Obviously, if they aren't moving the price of this coin based on the silver price, then this strategy is completely broken and it'll just stay the same. For example, uh, let's take the 2010 Lunar Tiger, which on some sites is $70, other sites is $90, but it really doesn't matter what the price of silver does at this point. Those prices don't change. So if silver went to $5 tomorrow or Sunday night, uh, you would not see the price of a Lunar Tiger drop even a dollar. It would stay there right around 70 bucks to 80 bucks, And that's because that price is no longer in play. The coin is no longer available. It can't be ordered, so it's not going to move. So it's, it's key that you watch these and keep an eye on them. Make sure that they move. Uh, a, a great reason to stack if you're stacking these semi-numies on massive smackdowns is that you get that discount that helps you pay for that premium. So when you have a massive price drop on high volume, just like we see in this Bitcoin chart, those things don't exist for a very long time. And if you pull the trigger at the exact time when you've got panic, as uh, Rothschild was quoted as saying, the time to buy is when blood is running in the streets. If you buy when the blood is running in the streets, the, the following price rise, just to snap back to some type of normality, is actually going to take care of most of the premium that you paid. And you're going to be sitting within a month or so on a coin that seems like you got it at spot. Uh, that's how I feel about the uh, Lunar Goats and... I think it was the year before, I may be wrong, I think it was the goats that I got for $9.85 a coin. So when we're talking about $19.77 an ounce for silver and I've got half ounce lunars that I got for $9.85, I'm pretty happy about that purchase. So those are all of the reasons why I like to stack the smack I like to back up the truck on very violent sell-offs, and uh, I, I'm not really into dollar cost averaging, long-term stacking. That doesn't mean that's not a great strategy. It is a great strategy if you absolutely believe in the fundamentals and uh, you absolutely want to have uh, a number of every issue, you, you're kind of a semi-collector or something like that then that's a great strategy as well. I don't have anything against that strategy. I did it myself for actually probably this entire period of time. And uh, I bought low, I bought high, I bought at any different price. I just continued to stack. So that's a great strategy. But my favorite strategy is to stack the smack to back up the truck when there's a massive smack down. We are not anywhere near that situation right now. I will be looking for a price of at least, as you can see from this chart, the trend line has got, we've got to come down to at least $17 for me to consider that. And I would really like to see very, very high volume taking us down below that trend line as an overreaction, maybe even two more dollars. So $15, and, and that's the last point I'm going to make here, is that... Uh, the back up the truck, stack the smack scenario, I have found in the past, my reaction was actually one of where I had to buy. I was actually not interested in it for whatever the cash situation was or whatever financial situation I was in at the time. I really wasn't interested in stacking silver, but the price action made me act. When I saw the type of violent move that we can see in silver, and I saw some of the coins that I liked drop two and three and four dollars a coin just based on this radical price action. I actually didn't even have a choice at that time. My hand was forced. I had to pull the trigger. I could not pass up a deal like that. And I found that when you're buying in those situations, when the price is dropping so drastically and it's dropping uh, just every minute, it's red candlesticks as far as the eye can see and it's the volume is increasing it's a panic and that is absolutely the best time to buy any market but certainly with silver because it is so manipulated that uh, even if we go to 
300, 500, a thousand dollars, you're going to see tremendous buying opportunities all the way up when they try to shake people out and that's the time to buy. And we'll talk to you next time.